doubt they're concerned about what happened in December, but I think they're expecting a much more entertaining matchup tonight. Utah and lineup starting five is potent and building strength together as a group. With Jenna Johnson, Alyssa Peely, Dinesh Vieta, Gianna Neekins, and Kennedy McQueen. They have four players averaging in double-digit points. Neekins, Johnson, McQueen, and Peely all average double-digit scoring for Colorado. A few different faces in the starting lineup this year. Frida Foreman, a deep threat right now in Boulder. Tiana Jones in the center jump circle for the Buffaloes up against... Jenna Johnson, and it will be Colorado basketball first possession. Jalen Sherrod leads the pack 12, 5.5 assists per game. She gave it away to Quay Miller. Free to Foreman, tries to get it back to Miller, and too much traffic there. Kennedy McQueen takes it away. Yeah, already. You know, here's what's interesting, too. You look at CU keeping teams to 55, Woo! and there you go, Utah averaging more than 80 points a game. Kennedy McQueen from deep in a traveling violation, turnover by Colorado. The offense versus the defense. Absolutely, and that's what you have to be so careful with Utah, is if you shut down Peely inside, you're leaving that outside shot wide open, as we've seen now, and they will not hesitate to take that. Jalen Sherrod skies for the rebound on the miss of the Kennedy McQueen shot and running with her is Frida Foreman. Buffs have nothing going on the inside. Utah's just shutting them down the perimeter. They have had no movement inside to really get kind of the hub rolling. Whistle before the shot. Second turnover for Utah on the offensive foul by Peely. She'll check out. Only game of the weekend for both teams so they can leave it all out here. They would anyway but you don't have a Sunday game awaiting so Go for it. Absolutely. Frida Foreman Ooh. gets the catch. I, is it, Cammie, is it six possessions or seven before this one and five turnovers? This time the Buffs are going to score. Quay Miller, leading scorer for Colorado, finds the bottom of the net. Tamia Sadler checked in for the Buffs moments ago. Colorado, as I mentioned, has Kendall Wett out there. And Charlotte Whitaker just came on for Colorado on that last horn. That spot worked before. It'll work again. <laughs> Knock it down for Kennedy McQueen. Shot up too strong. Buffs battling. Inside was Whitaker, but can't rebound the miss by Jada Wynn. Ooh. Jonah Neepkins gives it back to Kelsey Reese, who finds Jenna Johnson, fights her way around Charlotte Whitaker, kick it out. There's a look for Palmer, high arcing three, too much. And backside cleanup help on the rebound win, now on the run, Weta. And free throws coming for Kendall Weta. A week ago, 100 wins as the Buffalo's head coach. Over 200 wins, passing the 200 win mark this season as well. A couple milestones. All of them have been so supportive, and there is a definite competitive respect for each other that is pretty unique. Yeah, Lynn Roberts said it well. All the coaches want this conference to be very good. It just makes everybody better, and it you know, improves things like your net ranking and your postseason access. About three minutes of game time here with no points, and that'll carry on. This shot by Foreman triggered it up on a running McQueen from Palmer, who gets it back, now dumps it in. Sid Berry defended by McLeod, gets it back and bounces it home. 420, 430 now on the game clock. Can Jones break the drought? Nope. And only one buff in there to rebound. For the buffs. Quay Miller back on. Bonley, Jones, Sherrod Foreman. Ooh. And Sherrod <laughs> steps in, intercepted. Draws the foul. Free throws coming for Jalen Sherrod. Jalen Sherrod feeling good, J.R. Payne told us. In good health. Trying to manage your minutes. Make sure Sherrod stays available all year long. Such an aggressive, high-engine, high-speed player. Saw there Sherrod avoided going to the deck on that foul. Kept herself off the floor. And that's one of the things you learn the farther you get into your career as an aggressive guard, how to not always wind up on the right. floor. Right, and... and Right, you, it's kind of like you learn that quarterback slide, <laughs> how to be effective and also protect yourself. I remember Kennedy Leonard, Buffalo's guard. Oh. Wedding oh. bounds deep for Foreman. 
who got it from way downtown. Frida Foreman, big bucket for the Buffs. I love that look. That breaks a five-minute, 13-second drought for Colorado on the scoreboard. Ties the game at eight. Under a minute, so good around the basket and deep away from the basket, Peely. Again, we talked about how she's such an efficient shooter. Good job by Frieda Foreman of making the catch, realizing she was open, taking the shot, not thinking about it. 10 to 8, 39.1 seconds remaining. Utah averages 88.7 points per game. They're on pace right now for about 48. And it's not likely to stick in that zone for the Utes. But they're just under 89 points per game, third best in the country in scoring output per game. And you've got every player is capable of putting up double figures, every starter. Spin and score. Nice finish from Aronette Vonley. See you able to kind of spread out the defense a little bit, isolate Aronette. She goes to work. I love that matchup, Aronette and Peely. Utah, chance for the last shot. Sid Berry's open, flings it, missed the three. Bouncing ball. Acceleration of Jalen Sherrod. She can get one. Pretty close to the bucket in 2.7 seconds. Maybe get a decent shot away. Quay Miller with Weta and Sherrod working open. Here goes Jalen accelerating midcourt. Sends it from midcourt. And the Buffaloes will be down by two. Absolutely. Knock them a little bit out of rhythm. But again, with Utah and Peely, you know Peely's going to get hers. And she is one of those. She's the tie that can raise all boats, that's for sure. Just two points for Alyssa Peely in the first quarter. Looking for more, and she'll try that from the free throw line. And when you hedge a little bit, they tried to take that, take it away from up top. Nope. Can't give her that lane to the basket either. Sending Peely to the line. 80% free throw shooter into Foreman. Tries to sling that up. Fancy words Thank already. You. Early in the game. Already. That was it. <laughs> you thought that was the start. That was the end. <laughs> Vieta. Peely missed it all. Sherrod takes a flat-footed air ball rebound. Jalen put it down and one. The other two out there for the buffs. Sherrod, the two plus one, good. Handling the basketball, Ines Vieta, she just took an earful from Lynn Roberts after that and one foul to Sherrod. And it was about back here on the other end, the offensive end of the court, not picking up. The ball handler, bucket put down. Utah needed the answer. They got it. All right. Absolutely. Score, score, score on three consecutive. And that miss by Vieta breaks that string of three straight possessions and a score. Sherrod sees win. Win sees bottom of the net. Hey and still a three-point margin. Utah having to grind it out here. Deep shot, good. And when there's a takeaway, when there's thievery on the defensive side for the Buffs, Kendall Wett is usually <laughs> involved somehow. <laughs> implicated. Sherrod wraps it around after the spin. Beautiful. Among the top three, Utah's fourth in the conference in that steals category. Foreman, great use of the. Frida every time off the inbounds. Utah with their 88 plus points per game. So first half, they typically hang up right, uh, low to mid 40s, and they're on 20 with under three minutes to go. Great effort early and a little bit of a sealed rim. They've missed a lot of shots, have the Utes. They were held to 71 at Washington State and then 61 at Washington last week, and the Buffs are bringing another low result first half for Utah. Now two for six from the line, and Ooh. now two for seven from the free throw stripe. Can't leave points out there like that against the eighth-ranked team in the country. Hey. Who would have thought a few months ago, like, why Why would he be, why is he here? <laughs> and here we are. Now it's all different. <laughs> there we are. Rick George, athletic director at CU, and the new football coach, Deion Sanders. Making a few headlines. 
not even a slow news cycle either. I mean, it's you know, <laughs> right, right. There's plenty going it's on. It's happening. It's happening. Beautiful. Run down finish. Kendall Weta feeds it into Brianna McLeod, who puts it away. I do. Weta with some great vision there, and what a finish by McLeod. Perfect. Ends. Yeah, nicely done by Utah. They needed some points. You can feel Colorado getting it going in Neepkins, last year's Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. She's going to be just a joy to watch over the years of her career at Utah. Foreman going to answer it. Yep. There we go. Again, Frida's like, okay, okay, okay. I'll see your, I'll see your three. Frida Foreman now with ten points. A couple of threes and a couple of interior finishes. And Frida's one of those players, right? She's a quiet 10 points. You're still more of a Buffs legend than Deion Sanders, so I mean, we'll see what happens point. next year. Great, valid point. You're Let's, there. We, I want to <laughs> ask your opinion. I mean, with, my office didn't look like his. <laughs> That's all with, I'm saying. With Foreman hitting that three, I got something I want to ask you about with the pregame warm-up and shooting warm-ups. But first, let's see what the Utes do. Shot Ooh. clock will expire on a good defensive effort by the Buffalo. Yes. on the Utes, proving she can shoot after that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, turns out, no. That accuracy training works out just fine. You got to fit that giant ball into that rim. If you're hitting with that thing, you know you're pure. But what made me think of it a little bit was that last make from Frida kind of swirled down. She got a hit left edge of the rim, but swirled at home and had enough margin with the small ball. The big ball wouldn't have gone in that way. Kennedy McQueen out of Hennifer, Utah, North Summit High School, a Utah kid. And the number of in state players that Lynn Roberts has used. Kendall Weta, a Colorado kid, playing for CU. Staying home. And the only Utah player on the Utah roster, Taya Sidberry from Salt Sanders. Lake City. Yeah, she's hometowner, along with Kennedy McQueen out of Hennifer. Rolled it down, got it to go. There we go. And missed her first three, but Brianna McLeod now hopes to pick up some momentum from the line. She's gotten there for four tries. Yeah, she's she has the, the most, line. Yeah, she has the most free throw attempts of any buff. And just a little less on the shot clock than the game clock for Utah. They can take it all the way down to a couple seconds here. Neepkins finds a seam, drives against Whitaker, and threatened to put a fourth Ooh. foul on Charlotte. But Whitaker plays good D again, denies the shot, and avoids the foul. Foreman before the halftime buzzer. <laughs> got it to go. And freedom. That's great things with us this afternoon about trying to just go game to game, focus on what's immediately in front of you, don't think about the wins, and I like what you said, don't worry about the loss. You get this undefeated thing going, second best start in program history, and you can start to fear the loss. You just got to play, and when it comes, it's probably going to come. Right, control your own game, and in the Pac-12, you know that there's every opportunity for an upset every night. Way Miller got the opening bucket for Colorado on a good start for the Buffs, but a good answer as Utah gets it from Inesh Vieta. And let's see, Cammy, what the intensity looks like from Utah. She said soft on offense in particular, so they deed up all right, but they just weren't very tough on offense. Let's we'll see what the Utes look like in response to their coach's message. Offensive glass for the Buffaloes. Colorado, Aronet. We just had a misconnect on the way off the floor, and so didn't mean to not give equal time to Coach Payne, just not able to track her down on the way up. She was excited about the free, before, uh, free to form and three pointer right before the halftime buzzer. Kind of sent her running off the floor. Exactly. Way Miller. The lead has grown to 11. But again, those are possessions, a little bit of a lost possession for CU, and again, Utah just challenging them to find something and CU ends up with not a great option and no rebounders nice pass Bonley finishes she's a high percentage shooter this season 11th best in the country at 63.7 percent field goals over 63 percent but down low today Kennedy they can all knock that down it's so effective Bonley Way Miller, <laughs> open dump off to Tayana Jones, who gives an over the back thumb point back to Quay <laughs> right, Miller. Right, right. Great look. There it is. There it is. Again, it's the freelance. It's off the broken play. Buffs are so quick to pivot. 
corner three. Good. Utah heating up. Kennedy McQueen. Her third three of the game. She hit two in the first quarter. You heard Roberts getting fired up. Coach Roberts from across the court on that one. And she's been working with the officials, trying to turn the tide, do her part. It's <laughs> working with the officials, absolutely. <laughs> she's had to coach every game this year, obviously. It's always a grind. You never take anything for granted. But this is going to be one of the more intense coaching efforts in the second half this year. The played against their opposition, and they're going to see Jalen Sherrod put it down. Another and one opportunity for double zero for the Buffs. And this is the aftermath of you've had Arinette with a little success underneath there, and then Jalen makes the drive. She does not have to dish. Peely cannot leave Arinette. Jalen knocks it down and gets to the line. Had an and one converted in the first half. So we get another try. Charlotte Whitaker just checked in with Tamia Sadler. Kendall Weta waits and will get the horn in on the made free throw. And Young, the five on the floor for Lynn Roberts Utes. Reverse it. Palmer Ooh. couldn't get it to go. And Charlotte Whitaker pulls the rebound. Good luck, though. Game's leading scorer, Frida Foreman, has 13. She's got the ball. Gives it to Weta. Kennedy McQueen has 10 for Utah. She leads the Utes. Quay Miller, a couple of buckets in the second half already. She's got six points. Miller, three for three from the floor before that miss, and an easy point-blank finish for the Utes. And Jenna Johnson, five points for Jenna. And such a nice look by Kennedy McQueen. Knew she had the numbers through the defense. She must have come from Tara Vanderveer because <laughs> Stanford got the rest of the votes, and you can't vote for your own team in those polls in the coaches' poll. Utah in the Pac-12 championship game. The Utes then went to the second round of the tournament. Colorado made the tournament, got knocked out in the first round by Creighton. So both of these teams, tournament teams last year, the Buffs hadn't been there since 2013, and the Utes had not been there since 2011. Yeah, both programs really building something sustainable, right? That long term. Utah with four threes made in this game on nine shots, so pretty good from deep 44%. Easy inside finish. Easy for me to say, easy for oh. her to do. Von Lay around the basket, so good. Athletic. J.R. Payne was talking about the toolbox for Von Lay. Deep shot's going to be short. Whitaker sealing off, and Charlotte, who's playing with three fouls, will pick one up against the Utes, this time forcing a foul out of Utah. I heard J.R. Payne right, right? She said Von Lay can just do everything. She can work outside, she can dunk. I heard that right, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> or that. Off the glass. Good for Von Lay. Let me just go up and get that ball. All looking like they're trying to contain numerous emotions. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some language. What a great group. Same for J.R. Payne. Classy leadership at the helm. Jalen Sherrod flies through. Sherrod getting back up. Took a shot to the face. Ball's loose on the other end. Goes back to the Utes. A scramble on both ends. Sherrod now back up and playing defense. Johnson's going to work against Whitaker and her three fouls. 50-39. Colorado scored 58 points against Utah. And Kennedy McQueen's going to check out. And the sophomore who had the top freshman campaign in the Pac-12 last year has voted on in the postseason award. She's back in. Gianna Neepkins. Melissa Peely's down there. Young, Vieta, and Johnson around oh. the perimeter, and Weta takes it away. The frustration on the youth sideline while Weta converts on the other end. And that's all Weta, right? She is tangling up that ball. There was nobody that helped. That was all effort right there on that steal. Second steal for Kendall. Three good. Gianna Neepkins checks in and checks in. <laughs> effort right now in this third quarter. No, I'm going to say she is not pleased with that defensive maintenance. There'll be one more pep talk coming here in about 25 clock seconds as Von Ley puts the buffs up by 12. The buffs' largest lead was 13 a moment ago. They're back to 12 now. Last shot for the Utes. Palmer makes a move on win, goes around her, and going to get an and one with 2.2 seconds remaining. 
flies in, scores. Can't convert the and one, and we and we got point seven left. I was gonna I was gonna cap off the third quarter in You're style, ready. but you know, hold on. Not quite, not quite. I don't know if you can get a shot away here. McLeod gonna send it in. Sherrod just gonna tick away and be happy with the ten point lead. Not a little down the line, at the end of the line of this season. Congrats to Utah on breaking into that top ten this week, moving up three spots. But that's all unimportant right now to Lynn Roberts and the Utes. They want to claw their way out of Boulder with a win. they got to make up a 10-point deficit here. They've been playing to a plus 30 scoreboard margin this season. Their margin in points scored and points allowed, they're a plus 30. The Utes, they're down by 10. Why they've been so dominant offensively. You want me to toughen up? All right. <laughs> All right. I got that. <laughs> the win pulls it away. Fresh shot clock and keeps possession going. From behind, trying to poke it away. Not successful. Jenna Johnson. Sherrod shakes, <laughs> bakes, rolls to the floor and puts it away. And one. That should be number five against Izzy Palmer. And Sherrod, look at, she's playing her straight up. Playing her straight up, but Sherrod is so effective at using her body. And so good at just giving it a shot off the glass every time. Came in off the bench, the junior, not a starter, but she's a key part of this. And just throws you out of, you know, establishing any kind of rhythm in the game, right, when you're constantly playing with that foul mentality. Colorado now 6 of 13 from the free throw stripe. But Utah just 4 of 9. Each team under 50% from the line. Neepkins deep. No good. Win finished her seal off. Last thing she got back was her arms just in time to grab <laughs> the time. basketball. Sherrod drives, and again she goes to the 10. She'll go to the free throw line for two this time. How they're feeling, and just a gamer, right? Here you are with a 12-point lead. Yeah, and they're leaving them out there. Missed another 6 of 14 from the stripe. First foul called against Gianna Neepkins. There's a good free throw. Neepkins kind of extricated herself from that tough defensive stop. Jada Wynn foul for Colorado, her first. Jenna Johnson grits her teeth, rolled it around. That was on the outside of the rim for most of the roll, but had enough spin that it curled back down. Gets the finish and a good look. Jones thinks about it. And Neepkins maintains, throws a right arm down there trying to get away from Weta. And speaking oh, of Buffs legend. Three of three votes, three of three. Speaking of, <laughs> congratulations on the landslide win. <laughs> Speaking of Buffs legends, Buffs legends, though, uh, as always, what she what she referred to technically as a pickleball injury. <laughs> it happens. Listen, <laughs> come She's on, a monster gotta... on the pickleball court. Yeah, they're going to grind it all the way out. Down, down 11, 11 here. Yeah. Just over eight minutes left. Neepkins, Weta jumps out, denies a shot try. Under ten to shoot. <laughs> Fling it up, Von Lay. Clock at three. Johnson leans into Quay Miller, who deflects the shot, and before it hit out of bounds, the shot <laughs> clock expired. And I think, you know, what Coach Roberts was talking about with just being soft. You saw it right here on this inbounds. Quay Miller playing with four fouls. And then playing straight up. Five points for Alyssa Peely. She has only had one other game this season when she was not in double-figure scoring. And that was early in the season. Three good for Frida Foreman. But knocks it down. 16 points for Frida Foreman. Largest lead of the game for Colorado now. 14. And Working hard on the defensive matchup. And that's where she can be so effective in, in exploiting that. First one good, six points for Alyssa Peely, now seven points. And Sherrod, J.R. Payne told us, had a limited week of practice that week in December. It was finals week. Sherrod was working through a few things and uh, was able to play, but a short week of practice. The Queen puts it into Peely. Wow. Tough shot. Not for her. Nope. Double coverage, double teamed. Wow, Sherrod. Oh, just left it short. Beautiful explosion of the rim. And then Jalen. Now Gianna Neepkins hoists up the first one. Here comes her second. 
both of them are good. A two possession game if you get two three point makes and fouls. I love it. That's stretching it. That's, yeah, as I say, it's strategy. That's true optimism. <laughs> you can't give up those, though. Didn't get that. Bounce it right side. Finish. Johnson got it from Neepkins. And a great look, right? She had it. She knew it right away after the shot, too. Letting out kind of a frustrated yell. Foreman dribbles her way around the horn. And more points for Frida Foreman. 18 of them. Weta doing what she does in the backcourt, pounding over the top toss. Johnson's got a lane, drives into Vonley, and puts it away. Just relentless. What is just relentless? Foreman dumps it in for Vonley, who will shoot two free throws. The college football playoff final on Monday. Got TCU, Georgia. Congrats to Utah, the Absolutely. football champs again this year. Making and some noise. Thing, last night, both of these schools' men's programs got wins. Utah off to a 5-0 and start on the men's side. Colorado a good win last night. But something's got to give tonight. They can't both win this evening, and Colorado has the advantage up by nine. One of two from the line for Aaronet Vonley. Healy had it roll off her... Palm trying to get the shot up. I'd say tonight the returns are phenomenal for the sophomore for the Buffs, Erin yeah. Bonley out of West Lynn, Oregon. I mean, right there, she just forced Peely a long way around. And then Peely is going to, well, I'll knock it down from out here instead. Erin <laughs> started her college career in Arizona, made the move to Boulder as the better of it tonight, but Melissa Peely now up to 12 points. Jenna Johnson has 16 for Utah. Team high, Mark. So they quite get out there early enough. Look up at that six-point lead. It feels like the Buffs have dominated because they really have. Utah reeling them in slowly. Shot miss here is going to let Utah have another chance to whittle it down. Hesitation. Neefkins going to get a foul call. Has made some, has a, had some conversations with refs throughout this game just about the, the physical altercations and Coach Roberts, one of the things she told me years ago in Salt Lake when the game over there, I would imagine tonight, tonight, if this doesn't turn in the Utes' favor, she'd have a lot to say, but I'm sure she's just going to do her thing by right. the tongue, and we'll talk Absolutely. probably Sunday. Five days ago, Washington on the road, an eight-point win, 61-53, a five-point win over Washington State. The team's leading score at 14.2 points per game and 7.7 .7 rebounds per game, also a team high. Each team, four players in double-figure scoring. Of course, Utah has that all year long. They have four players who are averaging double digits. Frida Foreman, sticky hands. Interception in the lane. Again, they're looking for Peely, right? They're, you're going to your playmaker, forcing it a little too much. Frida, perfectly in position in the defensive spot. Stuck to her palms. Great play by Freeman. Miller teardrops it up and down off the glass. Easy peasy. Way Miller approaching her season average at a dozen points. Yeah, and you look at their losses, right? At Tennessee, at Texas Tech, at Utah. Neepkin's going to send it up. Wow. Clutch. Knocked it down. Yeah. Didn't even rattle the net. Pride of Minnesota. Salt Lake will claim her as one of their own. I would. Way Miller off to Jalen Sherrod. Five to shoot. Sherrod drives. Good help backside, but Sherrod takes it back and scores. Jalen Sherrod, 14 points. The play is never over here. Kennedy McQueen comes in on the help side. Beautiful read. No. Shailen Rod does not keep her head low for long. On the floor now, Sherrod. In the middle of everything, the arrow goes to Colorado. Jalen Sherrod signals first down. She had it blocked backside. Turns around, picks up the loose ball and scores. It bounces her way, no worries. Colorado's defense does so well, even when you've lost some of your primary defensive playmakers.
still just creating chaos. Well, since the loss at Utah, Colorado has won four straight. None of those conference games. Val Neepkins. Vonley will switch positions. Vonley dropping back on D. And a good on both. And Gwen, one of those kids, too, when you're in these positions, who do you want? Yeah, you give the ball to Gwen every time, so she's the one going to the line. Under one minute remaining now, and the Utes in a nine-point hole. Get it inside to Johnson. She'll draw the foul. Compared to 18 for Utah, if you look at the stat board in the arena right now, every buff on the floor has at least three fouls, two of them with four. They have not given up easy buckets. They've forced the issue. Utah from the stripe, 11 of 16 before that one sent up, and Johnson missed it. Eight-point lead, no rush here for the Buffs. Crowd coming to their feet with 47-4 remaining. And the number eight team in the country on the ropes. It's funny with Frida Foreman's name. You, it seems like alliteration just happens with Frida's name a lot. Friday and free throws and she wears number free. <laughs> I think it's just your gift. It's your strength. <laughs> too little, too late. The most decisive quarter in this game was the second when Colorado outscored Utah 21-12. to in Salt Lake, Utah dominated the Buffs in the second quarter. Reversal here tonight. 12 points for Quay Miller, 4 of 8 shooting, 4 for 4 from the stripe. It's such a crazy wrinkle that here Utah cannot get anything going on the road. On a one-game weekend, how good would it feel for the Buffs? They hold on in their great position here. Jalen Sherrod to the line. She's four of seven from the straight maker, five of eight. You're in March before you know it. You got this three-game chunk. You start this out this way. That's a bit of momentum you can build on. That's confidence you can build on. Jalen Sherrod at 16 points. Season high is 21 against Texas. Texas got 15 in what is going to be a win over the undefeated 14-0 number eight ranked Utah Utes. It's all that, and it is a little bit of vengeance for the blowout loss in Salt Lake City. On December 14th, the Buffs get to celebrate with their fans on their feet with Coach Prime in the house tonight. Rick George, the AD, everybody's getting a good look.